All right, we're back. We're doing uh, another uh, comic interview. This is like kind of a part two. Um, I did a video with the guys over at Hero Story, so this is kind of like a continuation of that. But we got Jeremy Adams back. We're going to talk uh, Flash comics, all things comics. We got Flash Point Beyond. Yeah. I mean, you're killing it right now, man. Um, oh, thanks. I, you know, it, it's weird to say I'm killing it. I have no idea. I honestly, every time I turn in a script, I'm like, I don't know. I hope people like it. Yeah. You know? I mean, you just don't know. People are fickle, and and I'm just trying to have fun and 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 just do fun things, you know. Yeah. I have like decades worth of comic ideas, you know, backed up in my head, and suddenly somebody's given me an outlet for it. So it's been yeah, it's been remarkable. It's and I think, dream. Yeah, it is. And more than that, it's getting to work with all these people that are kind of like my heroes, you know. At, at the point, I think it was like seven seventy one or it was like when Kevin McGuire did <laughs> did the segment where um, Wally gets dropped into reverse Flash's body. And I remember just sitting there going like, Kevin McGuire's drawing this. Like, I could not believe that McGuire was drawing something I wrote. Oh, because yeah. I was such a fan of like JLI and all this stuff. And it was so funny. And I just kept thinking, how is this possible? You know, and even if they kicked me off the book, like the day after, I'd be like, it doesn't matter. I got that. That happened. <laughs> you know? Oh, like, yeah. Totally. <laughs> that was um, such a thrill. Yeah. And working with Jeff, you know, like I had been, I've been writing, I've been reading Jeff's stuff for ages, obviously, like all of us have. And um, when Tim and I met him, I didn't know what to think. I, you know, you hear stories or whatever, but like he couldn't have been a more heartwarming, incredible guy still we're just like we became friends and it's like and just hearing his thoughts on comics like he obviously doesn't need to be doing comics at all um you know he's making gobs of money doing other things movies and whatnot and so he just still loves to do comics and he loves to talk about comics and he loves dc comics in particular so it's cool it's i i get to hang out and talk with these people <laughs> yeah like I had a long conversation with Philip Kennedy Johnson and I was like, this guy is the coolest dude, you know, like I, I'm constantly, and Josh Williamson has been such a huge uh, cheerleader for me on the flash and to have, and, oh, and, totally. and Mark Wade too. Like they've been, they've been incredible. So I'm, I've been very lucky. I feel very, very blessed. Yeah. Now, um, now that flashpoint Beyond's done, how, like, how is that experience working with uh, Jeff and, you know, it was great with T Jeff and Tim and Tim. Tomatico and Janine. So it, it, we worked, we ran it. It was ran mostly like a, a TV show in a way. It's like we'd get together and at Jeff's office and have a big old whiteboard and we kind of break down what we wanted to happen and then be like, okay, you go do this, write it. We would, you know, touch up each other's stuff and come up with different ideas and, uh, and it it was just it was unique because it was also Tim and I learning how you know Jeff does things and and he has a he has a bigger story to tell tell you know the new golden age stuff that spins out of it and for us you know the the more you know grounded elements of talking about Thomas Wayne and and kind of expanding that universe a little bit. It was really exciting. We left it on this cool cliffhanger too, where it's where hopefully people are like, "Man, I want to know, yeah, how these, you know, the this trio of sort of heroes, you know, deals with a Kryptonian invasion or the Amazons, you know, still running roughshod over the world." You know, we, I, I would love to continue that. I think all of us would. Oh yeah, it's like uh everything at DC just feels so like exciting right now, just because, um, you know, we have Mark Wade doing Lazarus plan and all yeah. that. We got Jeff stuff. I mean, we just yeah. got off a crisis. So like, there's a lot going on, you know what I mean? Like, um, even just today, like Mark Wade with uh, Lazarus planet. It's like, yeah. wow. Like it, it, it feels at times it feels chaotic, but in, in a good way, like it's like, yeah don't know at dc at least it feels like you don't know what's going to happen next in terms of books yeah <laughs> and it's just like it's constant there's a little bit of and i don't know because i you know i only started right when warner brothers went through this huge upheaval like twice 
And yeah. I think there were like at least three layoffs at DC while I was there, which probably allowed me to survive longer. <laughs> yeah. You know, like no one was, I don't know. I was turning scripts in on time. So I don't know, you know, it was like, I was just doing what I was supposed to be doing or I, I, I was having fun doing, but it does feel like there's some risk taking creatively, which is fun. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but I think that's just comic books in general, but it does oh, yeah. feel very like there's a lot of energy happening with DC books, because if you think about whether it's Tom King doing human target or, uh, you know, Philip Kennedy Johnson, like killing it on this action comics, or there's just, there's some, there's some really cool stuff just kind of. Yeah. Happening, you know, and, right. and, and to me, DC is sitting on a treasure trove of characters that haven't even been touched yet, you know? Oh, yeah, man. Totally. I mean, there's tons of them that I'm just like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, you, you know? And, of course, I'm I'm constantly pitching stupid stuff that constantly gets like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, give me six issues of this. Or how about right. this? How about this? You know? Like, yeah. Shut up. You know? <laughs> right. Um, but... um what happened well we had like the dark dark crisis um yeah. you know you're tying into that i mean yeah. man it, it was just so awesome because you have this big event going on and it it's connected but it, at the same time it's its own story right you know, and it, it continues to fly it was just so organic you know it just you know oh, sometimes okay. you get to these crossovers like and you kind of it's a little jarring you know what i mean yeah. like yeah well i mean i remember that as growing up it's like you read a book and there'd be a crossover and it'd be like, continue this book, uh, you know, in another book or whatever. And it yeah. would always be kind of annoying, if especially if it was kind of cliffhanger <laughs> So when Josh, came, I think mine was the only ongoing that was connected to D Dark Crisis at the time. I think they did a bunch of minis, but I think it's the only one that like directly connected. And the way Josh, he just said, hey, we need the Flash family to go find Barry. And I was like, okay. And he's like three issues i'm like yeah okay and he's like uh i'm like well what does he have to do he's like uh he has to uh barry has to get snapped out of being on this planet it's kind of like sucking his power away i'm like okay <laughs> you know, <it> was like <laughs> there weren't really guardrails so like for me i i was like that's a one issue story yeah so i was like but i want to use as many characters as i could I obviously couldn't uh, use Bart because he's with Young Justice. So yeah. uh, bringing all those Flash family members in and then starting to build more and more, like obviously Mr. Terrific has become a great character in the Flash book and building up the technology that they can use the Speed Force that is connected to all time and space as sort of a Stargate, you know, in a way, oh, yeah. or at least Apollo. I, I love that. And I and to me in my head, I'm like, oh, this is awesome because we can split up this team. We can tell these individual stories, but these also these individual stories could have ramifications. So that was obviously the first time we talked about the fraction inside the Mad Max world. And the idea also that that you know that technology exists with the speed force. I I mean, there's been variations of that in the past. I'm not, everything's, after 800 issues, you know, not everything's brand new, but but the idea that I could tell these three different stories and get to know those characters, because those characters are going to end up having a part to play in the one minute war. And I was always thinking ahead. Um, it was very early on. I gave them like, this is what my plan is to issue 800, <laughs> you know? And it was like this huge swath of like, here's every log line for every issue and every cover comp and like, you know, uh so i was i was pre, pre and i did that only because I, I kept thinking about ideas yeah and i was like i have to stop thinking about this uh because if i keep thinking i'm just gonna it's gonna be an infinite amount of stories and even as we got close to 800 i started going like oh my gosh here's the next 25 issues i could do here's the story i could do oh my gosh and i got really excited about it and it's like that's a dangerous place to be <laughs> so so i'm excited to uh you know, one minute war. Really, the setup was last or a couple of days ago. That was kind of the first issue, but it's it, the you know the clock kind of started at the end of that issue, and then I think it's fully. I think it's seven issues in all. I I know people had said six, but I was like, can I have one more issue? 
<laughs> and then and even when I got that last dish, I was like, can I have a couple more pages? And they're like, no. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, grumble, uh, grumble. And actually the 40 page spectacular, I don't know if that's what it's called. <laughs> the 40 pager that comes out this month. Um, it is, it is uh, really important. It's a couple of stories in it are, I think, very important to the one minute war arc. There's stuff about the fraction and kind of how they came to be and stuff that will um, take, you know, mess with the rest of the, the the story. But it was really fun to do. And I got to work with, you know, Fernando did this incredible. Yeah. I could work with Fernando all the time, all day, every day. Sarah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he he like weirdly I'll write something and it, just the way I describe it or whatever he gets my meaning and he and he just he does it exactly he does it exactly like i think but 10 times better if that makes sense it's like right. oh that's exactly what i was thinking and you did it 10 times better so this is the best thing ever <laughs> you know <laughs> and he always goes the extra mile with it which is pretty cool awesome um how Sorry. does it feel now that um you know we have all the flashes together again i mean like a lot of yeah. your run has been you know wally so now it's just kind of like how what's it been like having these both these characters run around as the flash you know yeah i uh it has been weird because uh the way that when i first started it was obviously it was barry and wally i mean it was wally it was about yep. wally but you had barry and and the way that i thought about it is that i wanted to get to know barry i mean i wanted to get to know wally and in that first run, I really kind of found the voice that I wanted to write Wally with. And then immediately after that, you can see that I'm like, okay, I kind of want to find out what these kids, who these kids are. And oh, how yeah. I want these kids. And I got really excited about those kids and, and including Maxine, who I just think is a hoot. And so like those kids, and I was, as I was building out my young, my, my own little super team, you know, that, that, that started appearing. And then I wanted I wanted to concentrate on Linda and I wanted to really and it was just me kind of building out the family organically so that like if you as a reader you kind of come along for the ride so you know who Wally is and then you and you you kind of fall in love with the kids and you fall in love with Linda. So so they they are just because it's just a family book. So at the point after Linda, when I when I scooped in Wallace, I was like, okay, I need to figure out who Ace is. And I just, I just thought it was compelling that there's this other kid out there, you know, that has his name that they, they created for, you know, this reboot. And I didn't, I didn't really understand who he was as a character. And so I, I really was like a flash needs a kid flash. There's a kid flash out there. I really want to explore that character because to me, I don't, I like creating characters. Like I love creating Omega Bam Man or Gold Beetle or whatever. But there's so many characters that exist that I would love to dig into. And that that issue where Wally, you know, convinces them to skip class at Teen Titans Academy and they go running around. I thought it ended up being just a really good kind of intimate issue about cousins and family and about Flash's role as boots on the ground. And so all I've been doing is building, building. So now we're at one minute war and, and I, you know, I brought in Jesse quick and Max and uh, you know, I've written Jay and in, in, in different media uh, animation or whatever. And so giving them moments. So we all kind of know them, but giving them moments and then having their relationships with each other. Um, obviously I set up the, the, the Bart and Ace kind of like dynamic up front which um i think is much more like uh you know it's like danny glover and mel gibson and lethal weapon it's very bickery at you know and hopefully that goes somewhere and it was it was one of those things where i'm writing it because to me bart is so aloof sometimes and he's just like hey you know but but i also think i like to obviously with this flash run i like to address a lot of the elephants in the room you know whether it was heroes in crisis or like with wallace it's like where's barry you know he never calls me you know <laughs> it's like these these things that happen because i'm kind of a continuity whore in a way that i like to think it all is connected 
you know, and I like to try to address those things. And with the Flash family, I, I in particular, Wally, obviously, in 789, I addressed it as like, I think that Wally, I think that Wally remembers all the reboots. I think Wally knows all the variations he can hold all those versions of the timelines in his head um and because of the stuff he's gone through he's very empathetic about it so it doesn't drive him crazy um but yeah it's been a blast and i found myself uh very attached to the flash family i mean you know the bat family does it really well they've 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 done it over the years where there's been a lot of emphasis on Batman, but then there's been a lot of emphasis on all the other characters within the Bat family. And and I think the Flash family is as interesting. The The problem with the Flash family sometimes is everybody goes, oh, they just run fast. But that doesn't mean they're the same character, especially if you you focus on their character, you know? So oh, yeah. I, I've, been, I've been having a blast. And there's still more characters I would love to dig into. I mean there's Avery Ho and uh you know I have I've I have never figured out a good reverse flash or zoom story um it's it's been done so many times and so well and I keep waiting for that moment where and it's gonna hit me I know it will it'll just be like this is what it should be and I'll be like oh you know <laughs> but <laughs> But I don't, I don't, I don't like to just like I'm just gonna write a story just because I know people are excited about that character. It's like I want it to be a cool story, you know. Oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, uh, the the thing about the Flash family that is just, I think what makes it so great is like it's always connected to current continuity. Yeah. It's usually the most connected book of all the DC characters, and I mean you have so many characters to play with so many dynamics you know what yeah. I mean? that's what makes it so rich it's like and and now you're just doing the thing with the rogues you know what i mean yeah it's crazy like how many issues you've done and now you're just doing your you're like rogues yeah. story yeah you know and they're they're law enforcement officers so it's like you know i mean that whole thing with <clears throat> wolf and the rogues and there's so much to explore there but i i really wanted to wait i really yeah. really, really wanted to wait and uh get a handle on on what I want to do. And I'm still not sure if I have a handle on what I want to do. It just, I like to know those characters. I like to get, figure out what those characters are. And, um, and you know, there's a lot of like threads that I've, I've kind of let dangle in the flash that I've, I've been wanting to um, tie up. Some of them, some of them get tied up in, in one minute war, which I'm excited about. But for people that have been reading since I've started, there's a lot of Easter eggs that are, you know, that will, that will show up, which I think is is exciting. <laughs> now, for the people that aren't reading, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, I'm sure right. you'll be. I'm sure you'll be entertained. I hope. <laughs> um. So, can you, what can you tell us about One Minute War? I mean, we only had this first issue, but right. um, where I what, ruined what, your chances for the Tornado Twins. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know something. <laughs> When I read that, I was thinking to myself, like our first conversation yeah. with the Tornado Twins and all that, I was like, man, Jeremy, this feels like a dig, man. Like <laughs> almost feels like uh, intentional. I don't know. It was just so – I I was dying because, I mean, me and JD from Hero Star, we, we, were, we were like talking about it. And, he, you know, we have conversations like, oh, it would be pretty cool. Like imagine one day what we would do with the Tornado Twins. And I've always been like – I would love to tell a story with the tornado twins and I feel like they've only been used so sparingly. So then he's always joking. He's like, Oh, you, you know, your buddy, Jeremy might, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you so, never know. Yeah. I, yeah. I listen, that first issue is really about setting up where everybody is emotionally and physically, obviously, and, um, and setting the stakes for, for for what's happening i mean with wally he's content he has a family he has these friends and then it just gets blown apart in a way and obviously for barry it's a come to jesus moment where iris is like hey what's going on you know and it's funny because i was digging into like well are they married or are they not married and like i was i was talking to editors and stuff it's like well they remember their marriage and i'm like that's not the same as being married right, <laughs> like, yeah. you know? i was like did they did you put a ring on it because that that's what matters you know like um, oh, yeah. and so there's a certain like because continuity is so kind of mm, very strange and then 
the Max Mercury of it, what I loved is the idea that he is a person that keeps trying to run into the unknown and run into whatever will be. And, and here we find him getting ready to basically like, I'm going to run off into the sunset and I'm going to go try to try to do this again and get into the unknown. And, 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 and he's never been able to get past where he is now. And I, I think that's really interesting. And then bringing Bart back it, into the family, because there's a lot of, un, to me, it's just, there's a lot, they're all connected. And I don't know, I'm trying to think when, when was the last time that they were all in a book and, and actually interacting, actually having conversations together. Right. I think it was like the end of uh, Josh Williamson's run. Yeah. Like for yeah. an issue, you know, it's like, I feel like, um, you know, Wally has just recently kind of gotten back into society really, you know, since like heroes yeah, in crisis. Isn't it weird like, though? Because it's been like a couple of years. Yeah. And there's still people that don't know that Wally is the flash, you know, it's such a funny, it's a funny piece of that. So anyways, so one minute war, all, all I can say is that there, it's going to, there's going to be, you know, it's a war. So there's going to be casualties and dark moments, but there's also going to be some humor because I can't stop myself. And there's also going to be um, a lot of like what the flash, uh, the flash family is stronger together than alone in a lot of ways. And I think that's kind of the main thread of it. Um, and, you know, I, they are the, weirdly the un the most unique people that can deal with this threat and people have asked like oh what about you know the kryptonians and like all that gets explained um why the kryptonians aren't you know running next to the the speedsters and stuff and uh some of that stuff all that stuff gets explained uh as we move along so i can tell you the first issue like i said is the setup the second issue is like we're really in the the mud with um, some of the stuff going on, but it's also them trying to get their legs under them. Like what just happened? You know, right. this thing hit, this isn't like uh, independence day where you had this flying saucer slowly come over the city. It's like, Oh, <clears throat> everybody suddenly, you know, the speedsters are suddenly aware something's going on and all that stuff gets explained in a way. Um, but I, I I've had a lot of fun doing it. This is my first time doing anything like this. Right. You know I mean? Yeah. It's like, I, I, it came off of a pitch that got rejected. And then they were like, and then I said, wait a second, I, I've got another pitch. You know, what if we did something called the one minute war and, and blah, 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 blah. This is like, I don't know, like a year ago, or maybe longer. And they were like, I, they just greenlit it on the name, honestly. And, and then I was like, uh oh, I've got to figure out what this is about. But I knew I knew what it was about in terms of uh, but there are certain things I knew I wanted to hit. And there are certain things I really hope people uh, come along with me with because there's there's a little bit of me like at a certain point, I think people are going to be like, this is dumb. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know. I never know. when I turn these things in. I'm just trying to have fun and tell, tell a good story. And Yeah. Know. Oh, totally, man. Totally. And we're having fun. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and like with, you know, the animal man family and the flash yeah. family, it's like, kind of like, wow, like this is refreshing. It's, I saw something the other day about how, like, you know, people saying that your run, you really can kind of like, once you finish out like the end of Jeff, I forget who was after Jeff Johns, but it kind of went through a couple of people, but really like that last issue, if you finish, go up there and then start reading your run. People are like, oh, it's, it's like no time's passed. You yeah. Know? We're getting yeah, back. They, they might have said it was Alan Burnett. Like Alan did a couple. I remember somebody saying like, oh, this is just like Alan. I don't know how many Alan did, though. Um, but I know Alan. Alan uh, fairly well because I worked for, oh, him really? for just, Justice League Action. And he was the funniest, just the coolest dude. Uh, even at his retirement party, uh, Tim Sheridan, myself, and Jim Krieg, uh, we had cowboy hats on and we sang him a, uh, a cowboy song that Jim had written. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. This is like back in the day. This is before I did any comics. And I remember yeah. going to this retirement party and it's like, there's Bruce Tim, there's Dan Didio, 
there's you know paul dini like you know and we're sitting out there like doo, 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 you know and being like complete idiots with cowboy hats for alan burnett but um yeah i know people have said that about they they feel like it's it's definitely kind of a kid cousin to or you know a direct sequel to kind of mark wade stuff and different things and for me it's interesting because i didn't grow up reading flash comics i read a ton of comics i read flash comics because i read everything that i could get my hands on um but it wasn't until much later that i started doing kind of a deep dive into that stuff and it's i mean it's a lot it, there's all there's such a huge mythology just even in like williamson's run what people are i think it still feels like he's doing his run in a way because he's been doing it for so long but like he added so many concepts and so many characters to the flash family i don't think people fully comprehend i mean i swear that the tv show is just like what other things did williamson come up with you know <laughs> right way. yeah especially like recent seasons yeah it seems like they're yeah, pulling yeah. a lot from that stuff yeah and it's uh, it's hard i mean because it, because it, there's a lot and you're and you're also trying to go like this guy can go super fast why do we make them what is going to be for me it was always like what's going to be his challenge and you know obviously for me wally's challenge is his empathy it's like it's the thing that is the reason he's not beating somebody up a thousand times a second and um it's also the reason that like i put him in situations where he's against magic and he's against you know intergalactic wrestlers like things that maybe we haven't seen because i i'm really striving to give people character the same or at least emotionally something that they can grab onto and they really enjoy and they can love these characters but i also want to give them action and adventure that is is different than stuff they've seen you know or totally I mean, yeah. there's only so much difference you can do in comics but you know trying yeah yep um do, what other uh are there any other characters you'd be like interested in writing aside from the flash oh like uh, separate like i don't know there's um, tons of characters i i grew up i think my favorite like growing up i always i always loved you know there was there was like when chuck dixon i think was like the head of editorial at bat the bat family or something and i remember it was like nightwing and robin right they would kind of like go in and out of each other's books cassandra kane's batgirl um and then obviously birds of prey and then when gail simone took over birds of prey i'm like a real weirdo when it comes to this is something it's weird because i haven't pitched anything but i love dc martial arts stuff like oh, I think, really oh i'm a nut for it and that's why um i did a movie with bruce tim called a batman soul of the dragon and it's like you know it's richard dragon and and bronze tiger and oh Shiva. wow and so i'm a i'm a nut for that stuff and that only came about because i'd have i'd, I'd go into meetings and all i could do is talk about like, like well, who do you think would win Oh, sensei, or, you know, like, I would just like start talking about the, the different martial arts stuff, because I, I think, especially in like, uh, Dixon would do it, but Gail Simone really like pushed that forward a lot with Black Canary. And um, I loved all that stuff. I love that stuff. So I would love to do something with that. I think um, Green Lantern would be cool. Uh, I would love to do a Wonder Woman. I would straight up love to do a wonder woman and there is a story i have a not a wonder woman story but like there's a there is a, a couple of dc stories that i have there's one that's like my it's my white whale i've pitched several times and i'm just like just give me seven issues just let <laughs> me do the thing it'll be the greatest thing ever you know and and uh it's in and around the captain marvel universe you know uh, and I say Captain Marvel because damn you, <laughs> Billy Batson is my Captain Marvel, you bastards. That's awesome. That's so funny. It is. Um, I'm like, I understand, man. <laughs> now, but, is there like another book that you would be another DC book that you'd be interested in crossing the Flash over with, like if given the opportunity? Uh, it's it's weird because what are the ongoings? you know um, um yeah you got nightwing um yeah. and tom kind of did a, a crossover with with wally yeah right so um if i did it 
I don't know. Yeah, I, that would be interesting, but I don't, I don't like to, I would, I, I much prefer bringing in characters that maybe nobody's using. Oh, you know? totally. It's a little easier like, that way. Yeah. Yeah. When the dark crisis, um, the last issue of the dark crisis uh, tie in with flash being able to put in, like I, I was a big, uh, it was Gray, Paul, uh, Paul Miotti and, and Connor when they did their Power Girl run, which is so good. And it was like, I th I love Power Girl because of that run. And I was like, oh, this is so funny having like Jay uh, and, you know, Power Girl teaching Jay like a, a, a move, you know, the thunderclap hands, you know, and I was like, oh, this is so funny. What was funny about this, I wrote that, I turned it in. And then I think it was, I think it was like a week before it came out or something. I was watching She-Hulk and they had this whole scene where the Hulk was teaching She-Hulk how to do the thunderclap. And I'm like, people are going to think I stole that and I didn't steal it. You know, I, had, I was like, I, I was just thinking of doing this too. I swear, you know, right. I, but I love Power Girl. I love some of those characters. But like I said, I keep looking for the reason Maxine showed up was because, you know, Nobody was really doing anything with Animal Man, and I was looking for people that had kids, and um, and somebody like real passionate was like, "How did she get her powers back because of the end of this thing?" And I was like, "I would totally address that." <laughs> oh, like, yeah, totally. Like, give me time. I would. I'll because again, I'm one of those people that uh, I don't know what is considered continuity. I don't know if anybody does what right. is like current continuity. So I'm just picking it up, and when I see somebody go this doesn't make sense i'm like well i'm gonna make it make sense like i you know like i already yeah. have i have a, a ton of um the stuff i want i want to like explain quote unquote because that's to me if you're a comic fan that's kind of the fun of just oh yeah totally like retconning and going like oh but this is what really happened and there's this, you know it, especially oh, yeah an art mistake uh, you know, I, I, you know, if it's like an art mistake or something, it's like, well, I want to explain it, <laughs> you know? So now, um, I don't know if you could tell me this, but like how far, what, what issue you came out today? Was it 790? 90. Yeah. So 790 um, comes out next week. Right. Yeah. How far out are, are you usually like from what's I'm coming done, out? I'm done writing the one minute war. Oh so, yeah. So 796, I think is i'm done with um and i so so whatever happens nobody can be like oh you know he heard us complaining <laughs> you know i don't know like I, I so i i wrote that and i had to i had to mentally just like figure it out and get it down on paper um yeah. and um and so i'm done with that and i've already i've already sketched out what 797 is and i know i know the plan for issue 800 and i think flash fans are going to be extremely excited about it really wow i'm uh yeah that's good to hear that's great to hear so yeah, I, I think i think it's going to be something deserving of you know issue 800 wow so you, you think it's going to be a real milestone terms of like where i think it's just going to be something that people are really going to be excited to pick up oh man you got me so excited I'm, uh, i can't <laughs> wait well, no, we're, moving great. Quick. we're moving quick on on the flash so it's like uh right you know, there's a couple things yeah but i would but the other thing backing up it's like i have two daughters i have two girls and i would i would kill for a chance to write wonder woman i don't know if it would be you know i don't know if it would be maybe as serious as like they've made Wonder Woman in a way, but, okay. uh, but I would, I would love a, a chance at it. Cause I, you know, my sister, I mean, when we would play superheroes growing up, it's like, here's your choice. You know, it was like Wonder Woman, you know, that was it. Right. And, uh, and, and she would, she would play it and beat us up, pretend beat us up. But I, I think it's a, I don't know. I would love it. And I, but, but I'm such a jerk. <laughs> like like you can see it somebody mentioned it's like is that roy and donna i'm like yes and they need to kiss <laughs> you know like <laughs> like like i i'm like so even like wonder woman i'm such a fan of justice league unlimited too that i'm like there was a moment in the cartoon and in the comics where 
Wonder Woman and Batman were together. So even when they started doing like uh, Batman and Catwoman, I was like, whatever, you know, <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a Wonder Bat person myself. <laughs> you know, Aww. so stupid, so yeah. funny. But those are kind of the the fun little ships. I have no control over those things, and obviously, I put them in there no, for no reason. I have no say on anything. But I'm just like I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Roy and Donna are single and ready to mingle. That's all. Awesome. <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. That's uh, that's exciting for uh, the future. Um, yeah. Hey, unfortunately, we got to wrap this up, but uh, man, this has been awesome. It's great yeah. talking to you again, and uh, I think we should definitely do this again because I think yeah. you and I could talk for 